Hey folks, welcome to Digimento Education. So uh, please uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the uh, bell icon for the late latest updates. This is Electronic Device and Circuits Lecture 12. So in the last class, we covered up to uh, the analysis of uh, Fermi direct function in res in respect to n-type semiconductor. So we are now today uh, starting with the, the analysis uh, of a p-type semiconductor. So in this case, we are going to discuss Fermi Fermi level in p-type semiconductor. Okay, we are starting with this today. So keep making the notes of it. So for the p-type semiconductor, we are considering p is equal to n a. Okay, and uh, this will be equal to n v e to the power minus e f minus e v upon k t. So I hope that you know all the terminal terminologies that we uh, that I have incorporated in this equation if you do not know so please go through the last lectures to uh, last lectures so the previous lectures please go through these terminologies terminologies once again and clear your clear your doubts okay so if you just take uh, na by nv by na this is equal to e to the power ef minus ev upon kt so take the natural log on both the sides nv by na is equal to ef minus ev by kt if you rearrange this equation you get ef is equal to ev plus ln sorry uh, plus kt ln nv by na okay so from here it is all clear that uh, ef ef minus ev is equal to kt ln nv by na <clears throat> this equation is important okay it's just a rearrangement of the of this uh, this equation that we derived earlier okay now again it follows some cases that need to be discussed so let me write in uh, so case 1 what does the case 1 say so at let t is equal to 0 kelvin if we keep the temperature 0 kelvin then ef will be equal to ev which means the fermi energy level will lie on the valence energy level so you can see this is conduction band this is valence band this is ec this is equal to ev is equal to ef okay so fermi energy level lies here okay and if we just draw the probability distribution function for this uh, on this plot so if you see if you draw this thing so at t is equal to 0 kelvin we know the semiconductors act as insulators so thermally generated electrons and holes will be equal to 0 so you can see it's basically if you see it just uh, uh, it is just it is basically the uh, probability distribution function rotated 90 degree rotated by 90 degrees we saw earlier this is this was your f of e and uh, this was uh, ef uh, uh, basically e minus uh, ef okay this was zero this is minus one this is plus one so at t is equal to zero kelvin so it was something like this okay you remember so just basically the plot River uh, plot plot uh, rotated by 90 degrees. Okay, this represents the energy. This represents the energy. Okay, and this represents F of e. Okay, this represents F of e, and this is Fermi energy level. You can consider it to be E minus E F, and this E minus E F will be equal to zero here. This let's say this is E minus E F is zero. This is E F E minus E F is equal to zero for this particular energy level. So just similar to that, it's just a rotation 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 by 90 degrees just as simple as that okay understood so this is this is uh, this should be uh, clear to you and this is so obvious from here okay now so in this case now uh, let's move on to the next case case 2 now at uh, in the case 2 what uh, we need to discuss okay so case 2 says let's say we increase the temperature let t is equal to 300 kelvin 
Now we increase the temperature. We know this thing that E F is equal to E V plus K T L N N V by N A. We know this thing N V depends on uh, temperature proportional to T to the power three by two. It's also a temperature. Then if we increase the temperature, this term will increase, which clearly says that E F at T to the three hundred Kelvin, E F lies above the valence energy level, and it's also above the acceptor energy level. That's experimentally found. So E F lies above the acceptor energy level as well as the valence energy level. So if we see that uh, the band diagram of this thing at T is equal to three hundred Kelvin, this is uh, conduction band, this is valence band, this is E C, this is valence band. At three hundred Kelvin, your Fermi energy level lies here. E F. It's not in the middle, and your acceptor. This one is uh, this one is acceptor. This one is Fermi level. So at T, this is valence band. This is conduction band. And this is experimentally found. So you can say that uh, at 300 Kelvin, your Fermi energy level lies above E V as well as E A. This is experimentally found. Okay. So we can say that uh, Fermi level lies closer to the valence band. This implies that holes are majority charge carriers in the semiconductor sample. Okay, that's why hole concentration is greater than electron concentration. So, uh, at some intermediate temperatures, in uh, uh, varying the temperature from uh, zero Kelvin to three hundred Kelvin, it might have uh, uh, they uh, they must be a temperature at which your Fermi level, Fermi energy level may coincide. Uh, Fermi energy level coincides with the accepted energy level. That could be any temperature between zero to three hundred Kelvin. Okay, so if we just have a, a look at uh, the concentration diagram for corresponding to this particular thing, you can see if we just draw this thing. This is uh, E V, and this is basically your E C. Okay, so this is Fermi energy level. This is conduction band. This is valence band, and then we have a Fermi energy level which is here. This is E of F T. Okay, so this is the Fermi energy level. If we just draw the energy band diagram, which is nothing but uh, so we just take the uh, red color, just draw the distribution curve. So if we just see here, if we just basically see here the concentration diagram for this at 300 Kelvin, it looks something like this. So this is the concentration, and this is whole concentration. This is electron concentration. This is whole concentration, and this is far greater than this. Okay. So this is this represents F of E. So this is at 300 Kelvin. This this is at T is equal to 300 Kelvin. This again the same probability curve. This is basically representing E minus E F, or you can, okay. This is basically your F of E. This curve represents F of E. Then what would your one minus F of E be? That would basically determine the concentration of uh, holes so if you just see you can see that uh, the concentration representation of this thing is something like this so this represents the concentration of holes at 300 kelvin this is greater than the electron concentration this is electron concentration this represents 1 minus f of e if you know the density of states we can easily find any any into 1 minus f of e and we can uh, this is this represents any into 1 minus f of e is the density of states you can easily calculate the whole concentration and we want to calculate the whole concentration throughout the valence band you just integrate it from minus infinity to ev over de is a pretty simple though it is the same thing is any into f1 minus f of e will give you the concentration of electrons okay is that simple it must be clear to you now 
so let's uh, let's move on to the next case of discussion okay that's uh, case number 3 now this basically a mathematical analysis okay that's basically a mathematical analysis let's uh, perform that mathematical analysis okay so we know that uh, ef minus ev is kt ln nv by na we know this equation pretty sure now let's have a look at the effect of temperature by the way if you want to calculate uh, let's say if uh, if i ask you to find out the whole concentration at the acceptor energy level then we can say that uh, nea is 1 minus f of ea will basically give you we do not need to integrate it over uh, over a particular period or a particular interval because we know it's not uh basically uh, the accepted energy level is not that large so uh, we can if we, if you are given the uh, uh, if you are basically given the density of states at the accepted energy level and uh, we know the probability of finding the electron at the accepted energy level so we can easily find that find that out the concentration of holes which are present at the accepted energy level that's basically the concentration of holes at accepted energy level that's that's basically one thing okay so effect of temperature so if we increase the temperature what would happen your e uh, your uh, ef minus ev term will basically increase this means that the gap between ef and ev will increase and which means that ef starts to move in the upward direction towards the intrinsic level so we can say as uh, temperature increases above 300 kelvin about 300 kelvin your nv also increases then ef minus ev term increases this implies that fermi level moves away from valence band towards intrinsic level hence conductivity of semiconductor with the temperature decreases this is important note okay understood so ecf basically moves away from the position in this case if you just have a look at uh, the conduction band diagram so this is basically your valence band ev and this is ec so if your fermi energy level this is ef at 300 kelvin so at uh, some temperature greater than this it will be equal to ef 330 kelvin and it keeps moving in the upward direction as the temperature increases okay so at a curie and uh, we can say at uh, curie temperature at curie temperature which is tc your ef is at the middle of eg is energy band gap okay understood okay let's now discuss another effect which is effect of doping second one is effect of doping what is the effect of doping on this uh, formula on this expression so what would happen if we increase the doping so let the doping increase let doping increase so we and uh, we are considering let uh, your na greater than nv so we can say that ef minus ev will be negative so if we if we say if na becomes uh, somehow becomes greater than nv ef minus ev will be less than zero so we can say as doping increases as doping increases this implies that ef lies below or e below ev as doping increases fermi level fermi level moves towards 
वैलेंस बैंड ओके एज सुन एज योर फर्मी लेवल एंटर्स एज सुन एज योर फर्मी लेवल एंटर्स द बैलेंस बैंड इट बिकम्स डी जनरेट ओके सो यू कैन से सो यू कैन से दैट ई एफ टेक्स अ डाउनवर्ड शिफ्ट so when ef lies in the valence band then semiconductor is degenerate okay it becomes degenerate semiconductor understood so hence we can conclude that conductivity increases with doping so it's somehow like this this is uh, valence band this is conduction band okay this is basically your ec this is your ev so fermi energy level at certain doping will be uh, will lie here this is middle okay so it's degenerate is degenerate so you cannot apply the mass action law here as well okay now uh, this brings us to the discussion of the last case of uh, this uh, topic so the case 4 here is basically as you must have already guessed we're talking about the shift so in this case shift in the position shift in the position of fermi level efp with respect to intrinsic fermi level okay understood or you can say as for intrinsic fermi level or the center of energy band gap so shift basically here is so you can say that uh, shift which is basically again equal to efp minus ef of i So if P lies below E F F I, there will be a negative sign because the different we are subtracting uh, the larger term from negative from smaller term will be equal to K T L N N A by N I. This is important, okay? Negative sign minus K T L N N A by N I. So it's basically this. This is E V. ec conduction band valence band this is efp this is efi this thing we are talking about this is shift understood now this is this is very important this is an electron volts and you should uh, well versed with these concepts so so far we have discussed uh, we have analyzed the fermi direct function what are its applications and what Uh, why do we use uh, the fermi dirac function uh, what are the uh, so we perform the thorough analysis analysis of that of that okay okay now let's have a uh, look at an example consider this particular example okay so it says consider two energy levels even e electron volts above the fermi level okay so let's say we assume uh, any firm the any fermi energy level exists there so we can say for if we just take, take the information from the first statement that e1 is basically ef plus e electron volt that's what clear from uh, clear from here above the fermi energy level electron and e2 e electron volts below the fermi level so we can say that e2 is basically ef minus e understood okay p1 and p2 are respectively probabilities of e1 so this is the corresponding probability is P P one and the corresponding probability is P two being occupied by an electron. This is occupied by an electron and E two being empty. E two being empty, we assume it is a hole. Empty meaning here is hole. It's basically an absence of an electron is indirectly asked. So we can say that P one is f of E one. We know this thing. We we use the Fermi direct function e to the power E one minus E f upon k t. So even minus E F is E, 
So we can say that it is very equal to 1 plus e to the power e by kt. Okay, this is the probability p1 for, for an electron. Similarly, similarly, now probability of whole existing is 1 minus f of e. We know this thing, it is basically equal to 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus e minus ef by kt. So, at that particular energy level, it is basically equal to, okay, so 1 minus f e2, this is p2, is 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus e2 minus ef by kt. So, we know that what is e2 minus ef? e2 minus ef is minus e, okay. So, minus e with minus becomes plus. So, this becomes 1 upon 1 plus e to the power e by kt. So, from here, by comparing 1 and 2 from 1 and 2, we get p1 equal to p2. So, from here, this is the answer. So, what would be the correct option? This one. B option is the correct. Okay. Let's have. So, next question says this. The conductivity of a semiconductor crystal due to any current carried is not proportional to. So, it's basically a theoretical question. You first should know what, let's say we, consider, we are considering the n-type semiconductor. We know this thing, this is equal to Q into mu n into nd. We, for general, we, we are taking it as uh, n and this is electron concentration. So, we know that conductivity is proportional to charge. So, electronic charge, this uh, option is eliminated. Mu n, mobility of the carrier, this option is also eliminated. Now, you must be confused with effective density of states and surface states in the semiconductor. Now, in the previous discussions, we know that n is proportional, is equal to E c to plus infinity n of E f of E d e and this is what density of states effective density of states so it is proportional to or so we, from here it is clear that it is proportional to the effective density of states this option is also eliminated we are left with the d option so it is not proportional to surface states in the semiconductor okay it's clear now let's have a look at the next question so this is a question in the figure ln rho i is plotted as a function of 1 by t where rho i is the intrinsic resistivity of silicon t is the temperature and the plot is almost linear so this is a plot which is uh, clearly given to us it clearly expresses the relationship between ln rho i and 1 by t it's almost linear it's, it is said in the question okay so it the question asks uh, what your uh, slope of the line can be used to estimate band gap energy of this of a silicon eg yeah for uh, sum of uh, mu n and mu p mu n plus mu p reciprocal of sum mu n plus mu p inverse or intrinsic carrier concentration of silicon ni so this is uh, literally a conceptual question and for that you should know the relationship between uh, ni with temperature and all so we know that uh, your rho i is 1 by sigma i is equal to 1 plus n i q mu n plus mu p. So, we basically here, uh, we do not uh, need to consider all the terms which are written here and make the whole expression complex to understand. We are just uh, taking out uh, the relationship. So, we are taking, we are using the constant, uh, you are using the proportionality. Uh, we are using proportionality. So, we know this thing n i is proportional to a naught, which is basically a constant, we are not going to consider that, that proportionality constant will take care of. So, n i is proportional to t to the power 3 by 2 e to the power e g upon 2 k t, okay, it is minus here. And mu n plus mu p, mobilities are also proportional to, so we know this thing that we are considering, we are by default, we are going to consider this, lattice scattering. So, t to the power minus 3 by 2, okay. So, this this t to the power 0 t to the power 0 uh, 3 by 2 will cancel and this will become 1 so if we just take ln on both the side is proportional to minus of of ln 
e to the power minus e g upon 2 k t. So ln rho i becomes proportional to minus minus will cancel and l e will be equal to 1. This comes out to be e g upon 2 k t. So we can basically write it in, in the form of y is equals to mx plus c. So from here we can say that this is e g by some constant, let's say we are representing a k dash, k prime, uh, 1 by t. Okay, so we are not going to consider this constant. So what basically is the slope? The slope is used to determine your e g. So we can say this is the slope, y is equal to mx plus c. So it is basically used to determine your e g. Your So as the option for this will be equal to a. So it is basically used to determine the energy band gap of silicon. Okay, it is used to determine E G. Okay, so uh, there are some uh, the other questions, the examples. Please try to solve all the gate and uh, previous year uh, gate and ESE questions. If you have any doubt, so I will give you my email ID uh, on which you can send your mails uh, uh, doubts, and that should be that that doubt. Uh, so you should only send the doubts. Okay, so I will only entertain a proper doubt if you uh, okay. And I will send a reply as well, so you can expect a reply within a within a, within one day. Okay, so we are now starting with the another topic of discussion that is important. So we are we are starting with the effect of light on intrinsic semiconductor. So we are starting with effect of effect of uh, light on intrinsic semiconductor so we are here now discussing the effect of light on intrinsic semiconductor okay so let me write a theory behind it when the light falls on the intrinsic semiconductor because of light photon energy the surface heats up and due to heat produced a large number of covalent bonds break and equal number of electrons and holes are created which is EHP electron hole pairs and conductivity of intrinsic semiconductor increases okay so uh, so uh, we know that uh, if we increase the temperature the there is uh, very little effect on the mobility of the charge carries in the intrinsic semiconductor so as we increase the temperature your charge con uh, ch charge carry concentration increases and we know this thing that ni is proportional to temperature to the power 3 by 2 so as we increase the temperature that will have a greater effect on ni so uh, that mobility will have uh, a greater effect uh, due to the increase in temperature at at higher temperatures due to which mu is directly proportional to t to the minus 3 by 2 due to which a conductivity decreases but we are talking about the intrinsic semiconductor so sigma ni is de basically delta ni q mu n plus mu p the increase in the change in temperature will have a greater effect on delta ni so we know this thing the conductivity increases okay this is one thing to understand and let's discuss about uh, when the light falls on a semiconductor okay when the light falls on the semiconductor what would happen so so when light falls on the when light falls on extrinsic semiconductor okay 
what would happen because of photon energy because of photon energy a large number of covalent bonds break so ehps are formed okay so under steady state we are talking about the under steady state what would happen delta n will be equal to delta p okay same number of holes will be equal to uh, same number of uh, uh, electrons delta n is equal to delta p so for an extrinsic semiconductor we, we do consider the so uh, the number of minority carriers generated because of light is given by generation rate so we define a term which is known as generation rate which we represent by g dash or you can say it is a optical generation rate which is represented by g opt okay so we consider the generation rate of minority carriers in the case of extrinsic semiconductors okay so let's say we talk of uh, if we if we just talk of uh, n type semiconductor so for the n type semiconductor we talk of the generation rates of uh, holes minority carriers because there is no because there is it is it is worthless it is useless to deter to basically talk of the generation rate of electrons because the electron concentration is already high in the extrinsic semiconductor in the in the n type semiconductor so we it's it's better to talk of uh, generation rate of holes my minority carriers so generation rate rate g dash or g opt is equal to delta p by tau p or you can say it is dp by dt okay which is basically excess holes generated divided by minority carrier lifetime okay so the delta p by tau p so the unit for this is equal to ehp per centimeter cube per second this is ehp electron hole pair per centimeter cube per second okay is it clear similarly if we just talk of uh, p type semiconductor okay so we talk of the generation rate of electrons so g opt for this thing is equal to dn by dt or delta n by tau n again the unit will be equal to electron hole pair per centimeter cube per second understood let's have an example to see the question here is a semiconductor is radiated with the light so that carriers are uniformly generated throughout its volume semiconductor is n type with a donor concentration of 10 to the power 19 atoms per centimeter cube excess electron in the steady state is delta n which is this and tau n is equal to 30 microsecond tau p is this generation rate due to the irradiation is so generation rate we will always talk of the holes so we g i d dash is basically equal to dp by dt is basically equal to delta p by tau p okay so at steady state we know this thing that delta n is equal to delta p at a steady state okay so we can say delta p is also equal to is 10 to the power 15 per centimeter cube so from here we can easily calculate dp by dt is delta p by tau p is equal to 10 to the power 15 divided by tau p is 10 microsecond 
which comes out to be 10 to the power 20 EHP per centimeter cube per second. So this is the answer. Okay. Now let's discuss about uh, what is basically taking place in uh, when the light falls on the semiconductor okay so okay so what happens when let's say let's when light falls on the n type semiconductor okay light falls on the n type semiconductor so equal number of electron and hole pairs are, uh, uh, are generated because of the uh, breaking of covalent bonds so if we consider this n type sample this is basically your n type sample so light here is basically made to fall this is light or you can say photons fall on this on the surface electron and hole pairs are generated and uh, the concentration of holes in electron generated will be maximum at this surface so let's basically represent the concentration of holes generated is as delta p okay so delta p is the excess holes generated and the, due to the concentration gradient there will be a, cons a gradient pro uh, diffusion profile or gradient profile like these holes will basically diffuse through through uh, through the length of n type semiconductor okay we can consider this position at x is equal to 0 and this is x and this is let's say x is equal to l some 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 length l okay this is diffusion profile diffusion profile so light is made to fall on this electron ehps are created okay so we can say that uh, so as you can see that uh, okay uh, so so we can say that uh, the generation of electron and holes will be maximum at uh, so we can say that uh, concentration of holes and electrons is maximum at the surface okay and holes will diffuse from higher concentration concentration to lower concentration okay so there are two types of current exist so in this case we can see like holes are basically diffusing in this uh, direction so hole diffusion i hole diffusion if we are considering this sample to be isolated or in equilibrium it is not connected with any circuit external circuit so whole diffusion will take place in this uh, whole diffusion will is taking place from left to right so whole diffusion current will be from left to right okay so there are also also electrons so in this case there will be drift current as well because this is plus and minus built in electric field intensity will be in this direction so we can say holes will also drift holes will also drift in this direction it is it is important to consider that there are also electrons generated at the surface so electrons generated electrons will also diffuse in this direction so the electron drift current electron drift current sorry electron diffusion current will be in this direction also the electrons will drift okay so the net current across the semiconductor will be equal to zero because it is not connected externally with anything so so diffusion and drift current will be in opposite directions so this will cancel each other i net will be equal to zero so uh, two different type of currents exist so okay now so okay folks uh, this is it i am stopping uh, this lecture here so please go through the lecture uh, very well so that uh, it is all clear to you and if you have any doubt you can uh, contact to me and can send you uh, send you e uh, send you emails to this link so
if you want to send some uh, send your doubts so please uh, mail me to this uh, uh, to, to this to my gmail account which is this and please go through all the lectures please solve the questions okay thank you very much